A new report from the New York Times details how several aides from the Bernie Sanders campaign have chosen to officially sell out. And they've launched a super PAC to support Joe Biden and not just to support Joe Biden, specifically to rally progressives around Joe Biden by using a super PAC. Let that kind of sink in for a moment. Now, this isn't the first time that this has happened. Back in 2016, Simone Sanders, who you now know as the press spokesperson for Joe Biden, after she left Bernie's campaign in 2016, she joined a super PAC, Priorities USA, which was a top organization, a super PAC, that uh, worked on behalf of Hillary Clinton. So, you know, it's not like we were under this impression that everyone who was in Bernie's campaign was 100% pure and they were in this for altruistic reasons. There are people who are career-minded and opportunistic that you have to look out for. But this time, you know, how quickly they've chosen to show their true colors and the approach that they're taking to, you know, facilitate the goal that they want, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little shocking, to be honest. So as Shane Goldmacher of the New York Times explains... Former top advisors to Senator Bernie Sanders are teaming up on a surprising new venture to try to rally progressive support for former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr.'s 2020 campaign, a super PAC. Jeff Weaver, who served as Mr. Sanders' campaign manager in 2016 and as a top advisor in 2020, is leading the effort which will focus on mobilizing the base of Sanders supporters, young people, liberals, Latinos, and blue-collar progressives for Mr. Biden. Other top Sanders officials from the 2020 race who will be involved include Chuck Roca, a senior advisor who focused on Latino outreach, Tim Tagaris, who oversaw digital strategy and fundraising, and Shelley Jackson, a California strategist for the campaign, Mark Longabaugh, who worked for Mr. Sanders in 2016 but left the 2020 campaign early on, is also part of the new group. Mr. Sanders has railed for years against super PACs, which can accept unlimited donations, emphasizing his reliance on millions of small contributions from supporters online to fuel his two presidential bids. The senator is not supportive of super PACs. He is not supportive of this super PAC, Mr. Weaver said in an interview Tuesday. He certainly would prefer we had not done it through a super PAC, he added, each of us has to make our own decision about how to move forward. Mr. Weaver said that given the short time frame until the general election, this was the most efficient way for the Sanders movement to lock in some of the gains progressives have made by electing Mr. Biden and ousting President Trump. Mr. Sanders declined to comment on the new group. His spokesman, Mike Koska, said that Bernie has always opposed the creation of super PACs and his position has not changed. This is an effort completely independent of him and his campaign. Now, there is so much that I have to say about this, but first, we've got to get to the name of this super PAC. It's called a Future to Believe in PAC. They're literally ripping off the campaign slogan from Bernie Sanders in 2016 to promote the campaign of an alleged rapist in cognitive decline. First of all, a super PAC isn't going to help rally progressives because if they're truly progressive they will be instinctively against these types of dark money groups second of all you don't get to co-opt the language of the movement that you worked for if you're not actually going to be principled and follow the ideals of the sanders movement now on top of that i want to get to a tweet from former sanders surrogate jamal green who decided to spill some tea on Jeff Weaver. He says, Jeff Weaver ain't shit. When he wanted Bernie to spend more money in black media, he shut it down. When they shut down efforts in Mississippi, basically giving up the effort to black voters, Weaver did that. Weaver made Bernie lose twice. He makes every final decision for Bernie. So Jeff Weaver and all of these individuals, Tim Tagaris, uh, Chuck Roca, let's not mince words here. These are sellouts. They are selling out. They weren't with Bernie because they cared about progressivism or democratic socialism. This is all about their next career move. They know Bernie's not going to run again, so they have no reason to remain principled. So they can try to make it seem as if they're doing this for, you know, progressivism and they're propping up Joe Biden because that's what's good for progressives, but they're doing this for their own careers. And they know that if they want a job in D.C. after they worked for Bernie Sanders, they've got to kiss some serious establishment ass. And this is exactly what they're doing.
It's exactly what they're doing. And the disingenuity is part of the problem here with this move because Jeff Weaver says, look, I know that, you know, Bernie Sanders wouldn't prefer that we did this through a super PAC, but this is really the only way that we can, uh, let me find the quote, uh, lock in some of the gains progressives have made by electing Joe Biden. Okay, if you're going to support Joe Biden because he's the lesser of two rapists or lesser of two evils, that's fine. You can do that. Strategically, I can rationalize that. But don't lie to people and make it seem as if we're going to be able to have any influence over Joe Biden whatsoever. Because if you were going to be able to influence the Biden administration, don't you think he'd be at least a little bit responsive to progressives now when he needs your vote to win? Who's advising him? Larry Summers. Who's still openly hostile towards the idea of Medicare for all? Joe Biden. So don't pretend as if there's going to be a benefit in electing Joe Biden other than beating Donald Trump, because that's the only good that will come of a Biden administration. Trump's out. But all the problems that led to Donald Trump will still remain in place in the event Joe Biden is elected. So don't pretend as if there's going to be any sort of progressive progress whatsoever if Joe Biden is elected, because that's horseshit. And you fucking know it. You know it. Now, part of this is um, something that we have to talk about with regard to Bernie Sanders. He's made some really bad decisions, and it's easy for us to blame individuals who are bad actors in his ear. His top advisors like Jeff Weaver, who he's known for decades. But the buck stops with Bernie, ultimately. Bernie didn't have to accept Jeff Weaver choosing to not do more voter outreach in the South, because I think that Bernie Sanders outreach to black voters in 2016 and 2020 was weak. He just didn't do enough. And sure, you can chalk that up to Jeff Weaver, as Jamal Green does, but we have to blame Bernie as well for this. Bernie doesn't have to take their advice, right? Same thing with Elizabeth Warren. She chose to hire, you know, Hillary Clinton staffers and Kamala staffers, and that definitely influenced her, but she didn't have to take their advice. She didn't have to hire them in the first place, but the same is true for Bernie Sanders here. We have to be consistent. He didn't have to take the bad advice that was being given to him by Jeff Weaver. He didn't have to do that, but he did anyway. And even though this individual was clearly opportunistic, seeing now that he's starting a super PAC, Bernie should have vetted these people. I don't know about the internal dynamics that took place with 2016, but what I do know is that after Bernie launched Our Revolution, which was an organization committed to, you know, getting grassroots progressives elected, lots of members did not like Jeff Weaver. There was a mutiny. And at the time, I didn't know about Jeff Weaver and whether or not he was an effective leader or if he was divisive and frankly toxic, as some individuals were implying, you know, when they talked about him back then, when they were leaving our revolution. But now, it seems like the red flags were there all along, and Bernie just didn't take it seriously. And now look, they left his campaign to sell out and promote Joe Biden through a super PAC. Look, if you want to campaign for Joe Biden, go campaign for Joe Biden. You don't have to do, a, you know, some type of super PAC to do that. And certainly, if you're going to use a super PAC and try to campaign and get Biden elected by the dirtiest means possible, don't pretend as if you're doing this to rally progressives. We're not going to listen to a single word that you say. And progressives, if you're, if you're watching this, do not give this super PAC a penny. Don't give them anything. Because these are grifters now. Right. Bernie's not going to become president, so they're not looking forward to a job in his administration ever. That's that's not a possibility. So now they're going to grift on to the next political opportunity that presents itself. It's frustrating because I want to believe that anyone who worked for Bernie Sanders, like they believed in the message. They were idealistic. They were doing it for altruistic reasons. But the reality is that Washington, D.C. really is a swamp, for lack of a better word. And there were a lot of people who were just in it for a job and a spot in his administration. And I don't necessarily know how many people were there for that. I know there are some individuals who I genuinely believe in who were doing this for principled reasons. Brianna Joy Gray, Nina Turner, they're the real deal. David Sirota also, they're the real deal. But individuals like Chuck Roca, Jeff Weaver, Mark Longabaugh, these are nothing more than careerists. They don't care about policy. They don't, they don't care about anything but their own careers. Nothing proves how opportunistic they are more than this move that they just made. Because again, it's not like they're just going out and endorsing Joe Biden and trying to, you know, ramp up support for him. 
they're starting a super PAC, a dark money super PAC, so they can raise unlimited sums of money on behalf of Joe Biden to influence progressives of all people. No, that's not going to happen. We see right through you. This is transparent. You're doing this for a career. And if Bernie Sanders wants any sort of credibility whatsoever, he's got to distance himself from individuals like Jeff Weaver, who are toxic, who are sellouts, who are frauds, who never believed in the message that he was selling. I believe that Bernie believes in his message. I don't believe a lot of the people around him believe in that message. So I hope Bernie Sanders distances himself and uh, runs away from these frauds as fast as he possibly can because this is unacceptable. There's no explanation. There's no logic behind this other than they want a job in politics, you know, for the foreseeable future and they never cared about progressive policies. Beta male, not a beta male.